Good morning to you. Hope you are well. Tuesday, the 17th of September. I'm going to talk about a couple of things. Updates in regard to the situation yesterday. Obviously, the big market mover since that episode uh, at the weekend in Saudi Arabia. Oil prices still at the forefront of investors' attention. So we're going to have a look at what's the latest to look out for on that regard. Um, from a news perspective from me and from a technical and setup perspective from Sam, they're going to have a look at what Trump has had to say and then move over to Brexit. You obviously, I'm sure, would have seen the news yesterday when the empty podium, when <laughs> the Luxembourg PM came out and obviously was talking to no one because Boris Johnson got heckled that he just dodged the press conference. Uh, so we'll have a quick update on Brexit. Where are we at the moment with those negotiations and, and what are we looking out for next as Boris now goes to court to defend his decision to suspend Parliament starting today. Uh, and then we're going to have a look at the trade deal which has been struck between the US and Japan, um, which is the latest in uh, the global trade negotiations uh, on that front. So just having a look at the charts at the moment this morning, the dollar index is basically flat. So not a great deal of movement in the major currency pairs. Euro dollar on the top left, perhaps just finding a degree of support technically around the session low that we're seeing in late in the European afternoon been the lower bound of price activity um, what otherwise was pretty quiet overnight Asia Pacific session a little bit of a dip to retest those lows as Europe's come in this morning very early um, in the equity space not too much little touch of softness perhaps across the equity index futures uh, again the overall kind of broad interpretation for those other assets um, aside from the spike in oil uh, is obviously the implications that has on underlying sectors like we saw a lot of the um, the, across the Atlantic airline stocks in the States getting, getting hit quite significantly yesterday. Uh, jet fuel, one of obviously the biggest costs or the biggest singular cost constraint for an airline firm. So there were, there were spots of weakness in relation to that move. Um, but overall as well from a macro top level perspective, people's concerns about renewed geopolitical unrest how exactly is this going to be dealt with? Will the US get involved? Will this now lead to a new, more military-based confrontation between Saudi and Iran? Or all of this is quite destabilizing on that geopolitical front. So do you get that kind of traditional rotation uh, in that respect coming out of equities? But all in all, the other assets are not really reflecting too much of that. Gold, if anything, um, is down this morning, but still holding that $1,500 level psychologically, which also lines up pretty well in the top right here to the, the S1 on the daily pivots. Uh, still haven't fully closed the gap yet on the move, but we, when we jumped higher on Sunday night in the futures market, uh, in, in the way really is that psychological handle and that, and that pivot level and low tested this morning. T-notes flat. Um, support around pivot for the moment in the near-term price action but largely unchanged and pretty similar to the Bund as well this morning. So let's get up to speed with what's going on. Let's have a quick chat about Saudi Aramco. Um, to face weeks without majority of output at their major um, basically facility which accounts for 50% of the entire supply coming out of the country. Uh, this is probably uh, <coughs> the latest development that's happened since the time we delivered the briefing from yesterday. Saudi Aramco becoming um, less optimistic that there'll be a rapid recovery in oil production from the weekend's attacks. And they've now moved the goalposts from a couple of days to now facing a couple of weeks or perhaps even months before majority of output is restored at that processing plant. So if you actually think about the price activity yesterday, we obviously exploded higher at the, the reopening of trade on Sunday night. However, we then came back down, natural kind of profit taking. And this is where the kind of technicals come into play. As I can see here, Sam had marked up yesterday the high that we had in the prior week. Acts then as that kind of area of, uh, of key support. And then as the details started to come through that perhaps actually uh, the initial uh, interpretation that we were getting from the press was that this could be quite a quick solution to fix. Obviously, the US, as we were talking about yesterday, were intonating towards they could use things like the, the SPR, for example. Apparently, Saudi Arabia have put the order out in order to put into work as quickly as possible idle facilities 
in order to get production back online to mitigate the fact that you know 5.7 million odd has been taken away from that that disruption but the fact that it's going to take so long to get back online as that started to come through prices started to remain elevated and again technically just hitting pretty much to the same exact point where we did at the initial volatility at the open on Sunday night. So still elevated for the moment, uh, and we still remain, I guess, mindful of, of, of listening out for more concrete updates of, to the exact specifics, but I would imagine it's gonna take some days before they really have a more accurate answer to that, um, to that question. Now, a few other things to be aware of then. How much does the kingdom have in terms of crude exports and storage? because obviously they, they will run a degree of infantry in order to counteract these types of events so that there's no uh, more severe immediate impact. And the stocks in days of exports is basically 26. And so for the time being, that does buy them a degree of time. Um, so if it is multiple weeks, although that I think will underpin the price of oil and help keep it elevated, uh, they do have the ability to do that. And particularly depending on how quickly they can utilize the spare capacity they have with idle sites as well will be quite key to look out for. Um, this as well is obviously Saudi operates within still for this time being uh, within the framework of OPEC and OPEC plus um, but as this graphic depicts there's very little spare capacity that other members have. If you remember Saudi Arabia being a country that was pumping just shy of 10 million uh, is commonly believed that they do or have the potential to go up to 12 million. Other countries do not have anywhere near that kind of 2 million flexibility. Uh, the UAE is probably the largest as followed by Kuwait, um, but their spare capacity resides at about 300,000. Um, spare capacity at the other, of course, biggest non-OPEC member, Russia, is only about 110, 120,000. So if you think about it, even if this OPEC current supply pact is to cut production by, say, 1.8 million collectively, then even if they were to do the entire spare capacity that they have, let's say that's three, six hundred, seven, eight, and then seven, 750, 800,000, that is nowhere near offsetting the 5.7 million shortfall that Saudi Arabia are doing. So there's not really a lot that the rest of the OPEC nations can do. And that's not even saying that there's probably going to be a lack of appetite really to, to respond um, in, in such a way. Um, this was an interesting or perhaps useful infographic that I saw last night. Um, I did share this on my Twitter account. Obviously, my handle for my Twitter account is below. Um, but I think it's quite useful often when you have these types of events to really get under the bonnet of what is the actual uh, infrastructure and what are the potential oil vulnerabilities of Saudi Arabia. It's good to know the kind of lay of the land, where are the, per, the major uh, oil terminals, refineries, oil fields, gas fields, pipelines, because then when you do hear officials comment or you hear of a, a breaking news headline you're just a little bit better equipped about how generally the facilities uh, are laid out and here you can see the two targeted attacks that happened at the weekend <coughs> uh, in those facilities which basically is the zoomed in area here so basically an, it, a lot of this coming from the persian gulf side of course uh, of where it's situated with you know kind of Iran, Kuwait, Iraq, as well as Saudi, and then the Persian Gulf coming out through the Straits of Hormuz, which is obviously a critical choke point. And then the pipeline, uh, gas, um, oil pipelines and gas pipelines that go from east to west to then hit the Red Sea to go into the Suez and into the Mediterranean. So um, again, if you did need to have a look at that, um, it's, it's quite good. It has some additional information down at the bottom, looking at their current Saudi crude stocks, but also Interesting to know Saudi Arabia's crude exports by destination, of course, China, number one, top of that, followed by Japan, India, and Egypt. <coughs> um, looking out for more details then from Saudi Arabia, from a news perspective, I'm definitely interested to see um, what they have to say more officially, uh, particularly around these detailing, which could be a market moving event for sure for oil, about whether or not they say this is a one week fix and how much 
um, can they turn around in one week or is it three weeks is it six weeks obviously the longer that period the more bullish for a price it becomes uh, so the Saudi energy minister is holding a press conference at 8 p.m. local time so that's going to be six o'clock London where we're going to be looking out for that so do stay tuned if you're sticking around as an energy trader I'd say that's worth adding to your calendar at 6 p.m. this evening the other thing, of course, uh, on the geopolitical side is Donald Trump. How is he going to respond? We saw um, yesterday the Secretary of State was very critical, pointing the finger at Iran. Trump, although saying locked and loaded, perhaps a little bit more diplomatic, waiting to see what the Saudis say first. But importantly, Donald Trump has said on Monday, it looked like Iran was behind the attacks on oil plants in Saudi Arabia. So he is saying it's now Iran. But he stressed he did not want to go to war as the attack sent oil prices obviously soaring and new fears of conflict in the Middle East. Now, importantly, obviously, from a foreign policy point of view, Trump has been very um, vocal about the fact of withdrawing troops out of the likes of areas like Afghanistan, foreign wars that are ongoing. And that's been part of his uh, mandate for a long period of time and so getting committed now into military involvement in Iran would be pretty much going against what he's been saying for the last three years and it's very difficult then politically to flip that so near term towards when we're going into this political campaigning period now for 2020 so hence the reason why you are seeing a slightly more measured Trump but also that could then be factored into price in a sense that if he is going to respond in a more tame fashion, then that does take away the immediate geopolitical kind of fear to some level. I guess then one thing I'd be mindful going forward in the coming days, weeks and months is, does Iran feel now really that without any repercussion from the US that it can really start doing multiple events like this if it comes down to Saudi having to protect themselves? Uh, and if that does happen, obviously we could be in for more quite severe supply shocks like we've just seen over the weekend. So that's, that's your kind of wrap, if you like, of, of what's going on, on on the Saudi side. Moving over to Brexit, uh, a couple of different things. Yesterday he was meeting with a couple of European officials. Uh, the atmosphere around the table was reportedly said to be friendly, although a breakthrough was no closer. Uh, no real further detail upon any type of solution around the issue of the Northern Irish border coming forward as yet. <coughs> um, the Prime Minister's officials have indicated as well that uh, Boris Johnson will defy the new law designed to force him to seek a delay to Brexit um, rather than allow a no-deal split next month. So this has been one of the things that come out of the press, of course, at the weekend. Boris Johnson did say he would not breach the law, but didn't go into detail then of how he would get around the vote in Parliament that ov obviously requires that if he can't get a deal, basically in principle agreed by the EU summit on the 17th and 18th of October, then by the 19th he needs to go back to Europe and request an extension <coughs> beyond then the deadline of October 31st. So again, he's saying that he's going to defy the law, but he's then saying he's not going to breach the law without saying how he's going to bypass it. So again, it's all this kind of political posturing. Um, the things that are happening right now are the Constitution in itself um, is going to be heard in Supreme Court uh, proceedings uh, this week after Scottish judges ruled against Ju uh, Johnson's suspension of Parliament. Uh, the hearings are scheduled to run from today until Thursday, but the actual outcome of those hearings might not be known till next week. Um, obviously, the, uh, the kind of far-reaching scenarios here, if it's found the Supreme Court that um, Johnson's suspension of Parliament was, let's say, not justified in a sense, and therefore it was a misuse of his power, then obviously that would be the most surprising outcome uh, and I'd say probably the most then uh, bullish in the sense of uh, the pound in its initial reaction. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think these court hearings, quite frankly, are a bit of a sideshow um, rather than a main catalyst to change the direction of where we are heading at the moment. 
Moving on, finally, this is probably much lower. It's not really something I'd consider from a trading strategy for today, um, but something to be aware of given the fact that on beyond the the remit of the China-US talks, there's obviously Japan as well. And Trump has said the US and Japan have reached an initial agreement on tariffs. However, the one sticking point still is whether or not Trump is going to reverse his threats to impose tariffs on Chinese or Japanese auto imports, which of course are particularly important for an export-led nation like Japan in the automotive sector. So, yeah, they're quite interesting, but uh, I don't think that this was the one that's ever been too much in question. I think the one that's very much more so uh, outside of China that will be interesting in time will be, of course, the one when he starts targeting Europe as he has done with Germany, uh, that being the president more recently. Okay, quick look at the calendar. What have we got on the agenda for today? So just having a look uh, for the session, you've got German ZEW coming out um, at 10 o'clock. That, just as a reminder for anyone new to the economic data kind of series, ZEW is the economists and analysts six month generally current conditions and six month outlook about what they think of the German economy going forward uh, so as you can see these are deeply negative at the moment in terms of the actual index reading of economic sentiment um, looking for slight improvement off basically the worst bottoming out kind of process going on at the moment um, so not exactly increasing optimism but slightly less pessimistic I'd say is probably the best description of that is that going to move the euro anything like that I'd say probably not not having heard so recently from the ECB I don't think the German data being weak is particularly shocking at the moment going into the US session um, it starts to get more interesting from the activity side of the data sets uh, industrial production cap utilization manufacturing output will all be watched quite closely and then you've got the API inventories coming out later on tonight um, Speaker-wise, a couple of ECB members, uh, ECB's Lane and Coa speaking later, 5.35, 10 past 6, London time, later on, early, uh, early evening. All right, that is it from me. Going to hand you over to Sam and wish you a good day ahead. Thanks very much, guys. Hi, guys. Good morning. Um, we'll start uh, with, with oil. Uh, to to begin with and pretty much on on the briefing when we were talking uh, literally this time yesterday oil was on its low of the day and we were just saying how important that that level was as, as a line in the sand for the day and, and week ahead and you can see just the importance here still marked up in the uh, the rectangles from yesterday uh, around 59 bucks uh, the highs that we had back on the, uh, the 31st of, of July and also uh, just the 10th of September seven days ago we came back down found great support there before pushing higher and uh, double test of yesterday's high so worth keeping an, an eye on that and you could argue then we're looking for a neckline for that double top this makes this level even more important here on the futures it's coming around 61.50 yes you've got the pivot there as well uh, so your new line in the sand to the downside I, I would have marked up around there 61.50 or or thereabouts and you know, another test of the, the high around 63, 35. Uh, be keeping a close watch on that uh, as well. So oil found great support before pushing higher. Uh, if we have a look over at another market, which was at an interesting level uh, at the time as well, you had uh, the, the equities in, in the US, which just couldn't really break their, their trends to the downside. We then did get that gap fill as well. And, <coughs> found really good resistance there so not in the way of too much movement really uh, yesterday for stocks now we've had that gap fill uh, 3005 obviously keeping a, a watch on that again today uh, before potentially can we get another test of those that triple top area from from last week um, keeping a, an eye this morning on what the DAX does of course as we have pushed higher from its low and a strong push there on the on the open really the last 15 minutes uh, seeing a, a decent move uh, to to the upside, so I'll be keeping uh, you know watch uh, what what happens around there. Just having a look really now at the the trend from yesterday's high. You can see that just marking up here now with the high that we just had post open. So obviously the high of the day 
yesterday afternoon's high uh, and now as well just containing price action there so a, a break of that uh, we can look in obviously yesterday's high and then actually the uh, DAX to follow US equities from yesterday and fill the gap as well but for now holding firm uh, on uh, on that level uh, as well another market which we were saying yesterday uh, was at a, an interesting point of course was uh, T-notes uh, and that oh, let me just put this on a, a daily chart we're just saying the importance of this this whole area uh, where we found the low on, on Friday and since then we've had a big bounce to uh, the upside however we are just starting to perhaps again you know look like we're just finding a bit of a, a trend so worth keeping a, uh, a watch on that we've already hit uh, uh, the, the previous low before that final push down on Friday first test of that early this morning so price just getting squeezed perhaps there for for T notes uh, maybe volume in the afternoon increase we can see a push higher but of course with the Fed uh, that's gonna be the real dictator as we were saying with gold yesterday uh, which did drift lower uh, and following the the gap higher on the weekend we've now reversed a fair bit of that 1500 key just above the s1 and then of course uh, where we found quite a lot of support around 93 uh, last week on the 10th overnight uh, the 11th you could argue the 12th and also the 13th so quite a, an important point coming up for for gold there silver which broke a uh, gap tire as well is, is doing the same thing and just drifting down after failing to make a new high uh, yesterday evening you can see the importance of that level from uh, the lows that we had really for a, a fair bit of last week just a really key point 18 zero uh, six three there for uh, for silver just as your your line in the center the upside a break above that and sure we could look for a continued push uh, it's acting relatively technical both to the upside and the downside in this new range uh, as well quick look over uh, currencies just to uh, to wrap uh, things up, I'm just going to have a, a quick look at the the euro uh, to begin with, which has just had a nice bounce from uh, that low. And again, this is a, a quite a key level uh, as well, just from a price action point. There's the obviously the ECB spike higher and lower, but just around here, uh, it's been decent price action uh, over the last week. So, uh, first real test of that again this morning, decent bounce, and we're now back up to the high of the day, although be it. Uh, a very small range uh, of this, you know, 21 ticks there for, for for the euro. We broke lower yesterday after breaking what was good support, uh, and now you know we're not too far away. Uh, well, I guess we're pretty much bang in the middle of the, the ECB spike, but a break of these lows here, uh, I wouldn't uh, say much is going to stop it before us uh, drifting down towards the S1 and you know potentially even that low of uh, the year. Uh, or multi-year, should we say, that we got on the, uh, the just before the press conference uh, of the, the ECB. So a couple of important points there uh, for the Euro. Pivot looks also quite key as well as a, a decent breakdown area that we had from yesterday around 111 handle as well. Pound just to uh, finish things up, relatively quiet this morning, just like Euro, so not too much going on, of course, with the Fed and, and Bank of England. That's uh, to be expected, small range. Uh, containing things at the moment just be keeping a, an eye on the pound if we were to drift a, you know lower down you've got around the s1 124.34 the higher the ninth which also broke through and uh, if we that wasn't to hold you've got a nice trend that of course broke uh, last Friday so we had to have a look to see at any point do we get a retest of that and if that was to happen today it would obviously be more than likely a fundamental reason to get down that low uh, but certainly that's uh, an area that I would have marked up as well. Any questions as usual, uh, please uh, do uh, let us know. Uh, but if not, I hope you'll have a, a good trading day.